this is all about reading the pre-reading level. If you are familiar or not familiar, all about reading has levels one through four and then they have a pre-reading. Um, I'm not for sure, but I do think that this one came after levels one through four to try to bridge the gap. It looks like maybe around 2011 or 2014. Um, I'm not super familiar. I have a friend that does levels one through four and I have looked at her levels and kind of thought about using it with Josiah, my third, even though I had not previously used it with my older two. Um, so when he was three and a half, I had a boy who was in kindergarten that I was working with. And so I found this used and it was so cute. And so I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it. And then when I got it, I was like, oh yeah, this isn't, this is too easy for the kindergartner. And in my opinion, it was a little too hard for, I mean, he was three and a half turning four, I guess, soon. Um, so it wasn't really what I had expected. Um, so I think for the money, I think that you can make this yourself um, or find it really discounted, like on Facebook Marketplace or somewhere that you buy used curriculum. Um, or if you love, you know, all about reading and you already have one through four, go for it, buy it. Um, but for me, I feel like for the money, um, it just wasn't really worth it. And then, um, I'll give you a couple other from my teacher perspective, um, what I think. So here's the curriculum. When you get it, you'll have a teacher's book, a student book, just like this. You'll have a puppet that's zigzag the zebra, which the kids love. Um, so that was nice. And then you get two books, a small reader that has, um, the alphabet. Let's see. And then each capital letter has a little story. You get the gist, A, B, and a cute picture that goes with what they're learning. And then when you do lowercase, then you can do lowercase. So, um, and then this is poetry. We have not read very much of this because we stopped using this at like level 39 or at least using it the way that it is. So my other thought is that buy the curriculum, but don't use it the way that they want you to use it or make sure that you're very consistent and you're doing a little bit every day. And um, I think that's where we saw, we saw a greater gain. I basically stopped with this at 39 and um, we had done all the uppercase and we were halfway through the lowercase. I'm like, this is taking forever. So what they suggest is they suggest you teach the uppercase letter. They identify A through Z uppercase. Then you, um, do lowercase and A through Z. And then the third section of the book is letter sounds. And so they have pages for those. Um, at the time I thought since he was three and a half, it would be fine to go at the slow pace because you know, he was learning. So I was um, doing um, the gentle classical preschool and it was free and printable. And so each week, it has different things that you memorize and you typically just do a letter a week. And so I thought that's fine. Um, but fast forward, I mean, we moved and of course my, uh, my older kids, um, took priority to teaching. So I wasn't teaching, um, just that as much, but I thought, you know, like, oh, he'll get it. Well, I read, I think something that Jesse Wise had said, and she talked about if your kid's not reading, like you want them to read quickly. And if they're not reading quickly, then it's probably because you're doing too much review. So I was making sure that he could recognize letter A through Z, just know what they were called. He doesn't need to know what they're called in order to be able to read. So I think I just saw this flashy pretty thing and thought I would go with it instead of old conventional wisdom that I knew and did it. So I don't think it worked. So once we quit, we literally just stopped and, um, well, I don't want to tell you what we did yet. So I'll show you what I did. Um, but let me finish, let me finish showing you this. So you have the book, it's a uppercase or capital a lowercase a, and then the sound and it goes across 78 lessons, I believe with each lesson, you have a chart you help them to find the letter on the chart. Then you read the zigzag zebra story that goes with A. You pick from different craft sheet activities to do the worksheet page, which I'll show you. And then you, and you like color it. 
and then you do a game. And so I will say this game was pretty good, just so I still remembers it. Um, you take Zigzag Zebra the puppet, and it's to help you rhyme. You say, is this your holder? And then he would say, no, that's my shoulder. Is this your land? No, that's my hand. So you're helping them rhyme land, hand, on and on. Then the next day, same exact thing. Find the bee, read the bee story, do the bee worksheet, do an activity with the bee, like you could glue yarn on it or beads or stickers, do that sort of thing. And then you have cards to rhyme, okay? So my kid was three and a half. I thought pre-reading, so they're not, you know, not reading yet. So then you take out the cards, which again, these are a pro and a con to me because the game's great. Again, they're more involved. So I think that's my thing with uh, all about reading levels one through four. It's involved. It's a lot. Um, I do spelling. I do the spelling. And so for me, I feel like that reviews enough of the phonics to where I don't need the all about reading. Um, now, would my kids like it? Is it great? Probably. But because I have four kids and I'm teaching four kids, I don't need a bunch of moving parts and a bunch of things for all four kids all day long. Like, you know, you get that. So, and the con of this is that um, my little one, which you can probably hear in the background, likes to dump. And I actually thought she was done. She was over that. And she sat here just a minute ago and she was like, oh, I is school. Just I. And she starts pulling the cards out and dumps it. So, um, all about spelling, each one of the levels that we have has a box just like this, only bigger. I have it rubber band and rubber band and rubber band and put up. So that's kind of a pain to me. Um, I like the system of review and doing, but when you have small kids in the house, it's not as practical. So it's a pro and a con. Um, so yeah, so second day in, he's done A, he's done B. You're supposed to be matching and doing um, rhyming words, okay? So here's my thing. Rhyming is good. They do syllables. They do word chunking. So like, I guess that is kind of syllables, but breaking the word up. Um, I can't remember all the different things that they do, but they do all those things, okay? None of those things are necessary to learn how to read. And if our goal is to get our kids reading quickly, that is not helping them to go quicker. That actually is making it seem harder. And if your kid doesn't get rhyme, it seems a little unnecessary. So when I went on their page yesterday, I took the placement test because I was curious to see, you know, how do they place the kid? So I was checking off the things that he knows and the things that he doesn't know. And it still said he should go to the pre-reading level, but this would be too basic for him because he's already reading. Um, so I think they get you and that they say you should go to the pre-reading level because they're like, does your kids know how to break a word up in syllables? Can your kid chunk a word? Can your kid rhyme? If your kid can't, then it needs to do this. So if you do this, I would do it quickly, but for us, I don't know, $100 seems like a lot to me. So now I think I've shown you all the moving pieces. Um, you have your lesson, you have your book, and that's another thing like, depending on how quickly your kid goes. So, um, because I bought this used, letters A through D were previously used. So, I took my book, I copied A through D, and then we used those. Um, so, because I thought I might reuse the pages, I just copied them. Um, so, yeah. So, here's the page that you do every day. Then you go all the way to lowercase, if we can ever get there lowercase, and then, yeah, we stopped. Um, and then they have some work pages, which are kind of nice, and eventually we'll have sound cards. So I will try to use um, some of the sound pages as review. We will probably continue to read these books because they're good. We haven't read the poetry book, hardly any. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'll probably try to pull those out and read them. So again, you might buy this um, if you find them used and then just, you know, do the other things. Um, games are great and learning to rhyme and all of those things have their place and are good. But in my opinion, um, it slows down your kid and is not necessary for them to learn how to read. 
Okay, so I did that in 10 minutes roughly. I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, what we did and that way if you don't care what we did, you can stop here. You saw my opinion, you saw the curriculum, um, and hopefully it's not too long. I'm trying really hard to make it a short video, but not talk too fast. Okay, so what we did instead was we have Hooked on Phonics and we have Ordinary Parent's Guide to Teaching Reading. This costs about $15 used on Amazon. Spiral Bound is great. Um, I've used this with my two older kids. Um, I helped teach Abram how to read with it and then Anna um, just kind of practice. And so we use this book, I don't know, two, three years maybe, and it's $15 compared to one year, $100. So again, the price seems better. Now, when I started, I won't talk about this now, but when I started this, this seemed very, um, it's all black and white, there's no pictures. It doesn't seem, like from teaching public school, it doesn't seem kid-friendly. However, after I have read about the book, why she does what she does, um, I've even heard that it's supposed to help. I have not read this, but I heard a friend tell me that it's supposed to help um, kids with dyslexia or to even basically stop your kid from forming dyslexia. Now, I don't know that that's a real thing, but that is what I was told. And the mom that was telling me had several kids with dyslexia. She got this, used it with one of her kids and, or maybe two of her kids and no dyslexia and it was wonderful. And so she suggested it. So anyways, so we started, um, these lessons, these lessons are a little long. So for a four-year-old, by the time you have read the book and found the thing and colored the page, they may or may not want to continue on with the activity that's to help them rhyme. So the lessons were taking us more than one day. Like I said, I was not consistent with it. We were just doing it a couple times a week. That really drags on. Um, and so it was just a lot of school. Whereas once I quit, once I quit, I was much more consistent. Jessie Wise says 15 minutes a day in the beginning of them reading to you. And she starts, her lessons are super short. Um, the first lesson is you learn at, at, am, an, ad. So you just say at, then you have them say at. Then same thing, they just repeat. That is all you do, that is a lesson, you can call it a day. The next day is short, you review some letter sounds. Oh, you may have done that at the beginning of the last lesson. So you review some letter sounds, you go over at, ad, an, am, and then they practice those words. Pat, fat, sat, bat. You see, super short, and in the beginning, that is all you do. Now, once you get through the book, she recommends you do two pages review and one page new, but you don't need to know that yet. So just telling you that is how we started. So I started Josiah on that and we started using a board and we would just write words that he knew and it was like, bam, he just started reading and it was way better. Then I started using Hooked on Phonics. And so now um, I use Hooked on Phonics, we're halfway through it and then I'll go back to Ordinary Parents Guide. But the reason I liked it was because um, it was a little more kid friendly. It gives them the picture to help them remember. So for him, who we had not learned all of his letter sounds, I was like, okay, you know A, because we've practiced A, you know T, so we're just gonna start and all the letter sounds that you don't know, we'll eventually get. So they teach you the word and then, I don't know if you can see it. So they separate it so you can say M, at, S, at. And then down here, you're kind of, over here, you're putting them together to make it a word. So that just helped him a little bit. So like I said, we're halfway to almost more than halfway over. And um, they do have little books that you read alongside of it. And they have little stories. But honestly, um, I do not love them. Josiah loves them because he feels like he's reading a book. You get the book over there. Or it has, I thought I was going to show you. They have little stories here I like this. But I do not love that because what my kids have done, both of my kids, they look at the picture and then they try to guess words. If you're doing 
ordinary parents guide, they do not have that problem because they do not have pictures. Now, will they get bored? Maybe, but will they learn how to read? Yes. <laughs> so they'll survive. Um, but I do have hooked on phonics, probably levels kindergarten through fourth grade now because people just give them to me. Um, so it is fun as we're working through this, we will stop and do a hooked on phonics, you know, for part of the semester and then jump back to ordinary parents guide to teaching reading by Jesse Wise, just because it's kind of fun and it breaks it up. The last thing I wanted to show you was the mm, McGuffey's Eclectic Primer. I found this um, used and it was so cute. And so Josiah has read some of the stories out of here. Um, all I wanna say about this is just, she recommends, I think, Eclectic Reader 3 when you're done with this book. Um, and I just found the primer and was reminded of what Jessie Wise says. So she talks about um, teaching our kids to read and how used to there was a very standardized um, way of teaching reading and books because this and maybe another set were like all you had. Um, so it was fun. We went to the Appalachian Museum and this book was on display and the kids were like, Mom, that's the same book that we just bought. Um, and so anyways. It was fun. So I'm reminded as I'm reading this, that this was all a one room schoolhouse teacher had. And they, you know, because you're all in one room, one room house, you would hear what the other kids are learning. And that's very, you know, similar to homeschooling. Um, so anyway, so as I'm looking at this, I'm just reminded that Jesse Wise says, like, you do not have to have a professional to teach your kid to read. You are capable of teaching your kid how to read. And I think that's very true. The more curriculum that I have pulled out, the more elaborate things have gotten, I think the more, I don't know, confusing or difficult it seems. But when I just stick to the basics, we do 15 minutes a day and consistency is key. So Anyways, I may do another video on kindergarten and what we do. I will say that all kids are different. What I did with Abram is not what I've done with Josiah. Abram was very number um, oriented. And so we just did something different. And I was at a different phase of life. Anna was in public school. He was at home with me. So we started at four. He was reading by five. We did numbers galore. And so I haven't done the same thing now because I have four kids. I'm trying to teach all four of them, and now I'm trying to teach this kid to read. Um, I say this kid because this is his folder. Um, so, it's just different. You're in a different season and a different thing. So, yeah, if you have one kid that you're, you know, or two kids that you are teaching, then maybe All About Reading is wonderful to you, and you love having all the components. Um, they do not recommend All About Spelling until you've completed All About Reading Level 1, um, but I would be curious once you got to all about reading level two and you're doing all about spelling level one and you've got all of the things to me that would seem a lot if I had four kids. Um, but Michael Clay Thompson, which is another curriculum we use, is very involved. Um, but I talked about that in a different video. So I will be done. Um, I hope that this has helped someone. I hope that um, it will help kind of de-stress a little bit. I think sometimes with homeschooling, especially if this is your first, especially if, you know, you don't have a school background, I sometimes laugh that me being a teacher, I have had to de-school. I've had to unlearn some of the things that I thought, you know, you have to do or you have to um, have in order to be learning. Um, so in some ways, I think my education background um, makes it a little bit harder but, um, anyways, I hope that this has, um, made it a little bit less stressful. You don't have to be a teacher. I'm a teacher and I still did what I know not to do. So I'm now reminded so that when I go to teach my fourth, that I stick to the basics, that we make it very simple, um, and that it's good. So don't panic. Your kid will eventually learn how to read. You can do it if you need help. There are tons of other homeschool moms who have been there and can help. And all, 
they're probably specialists in their own way because I know several homeschool moms who've been homeschooling for 30 years. Um, so that's a full-time teaching job. So I hope that you will not stress, you will figure out um, what curriculum or not curriculum because I showed you, I think I said that I've done this a couple of times so it's hard to remember, but um, you can just go and make these pages on your own like I did with my oldest two and it does not have to be fancy or elaborate. They will learn how to read eventually and good luck.